What is up, everybody? It's Sam, and we are back with another episode of Pessimistic at Best, the podcast. And I have a new friend here with me today. What's up, Sigra? Hi, I'm Sigra, and uh, I'm super stoked to be on the pod. Long time listener, excited. first time caller. Yes, <laughs> I love that. No, I'm excited too. I feel like we've been internet friends for like what two years, something like that. Yeah. I've known James through the internet for like four years or something. We so. love the internet. <laughs> love the so internet. good for making friends and like I don't know you're just like another gal doing local things exactly which we love I love that that descriptor for me a gal yeah. doing local things that's, that's the best way to I sum am. up yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love local events and you keep very busy which I find very impressive thank you I feel like life has been too busy recently but I'm also not doing enough of the things that I enjoy Do you I feel that way? was literally talking to my mother about this this morning because I feel like all I do anymore is like put out fires in regards to different projects I'm involved with rather than actually work on those projects yeah like scheduling stuff like I'm in several bands so I'm not only like trying to make sure that I can make all of my obligations with these bands but when we're booking shows I'm a lot of times the person doing the booking and I'm like okay so you all have to give me your schedules and then of course that's a job in and of itself oh my god it's crazy it takes up so much of my time so how many bands exactly are you in that is a complicated question. <laughs> okay, for sure, um, for so sure. I make music on my own uh, as Sigra, which you can find on streaming services. You can just look up S I G S I G R. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, then there you go. Love, love, good show note moment. Um, and then my main band is called Mobs. It's spelled M Q B S, um, and uh, it's it's we call ourselves a collective more so than a band um, because we kind of back up each other's solo stuff, kind of act as each other's live bands. For sure. I feel like that happens a lot in the band community. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I think so as well. Um, And then I play bass in a band called Watermelon Kali, which is the project of um, my pal, Sean Horvath, uh, who is the recently retired station manager of WSUM um okay, he's moving okay. he's graduated so he's he got kicked out for sure <laughs> moving on and up um and then out with I, the old <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly yeah and I I play bass like subbing for like uh, other bands occasionally when they like when they need someone to fill in for a show uh, do you primarily play bass? I prim- Well, I started out in opera, so I started out singing. Oh, um, actually, James did tell me that. That's so yeah. fucking cool. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It is not as cool as it sounds because uh, being a- an opera student basically necessitates being a theater kid sure, it's just sure. being a theater kid with hey, a fancy I love word a theater kid. <laughs> well I'm, I'm glad yeah I feel like that's why I have a podcast I was like never a theater kid but like secretly loved it so mm-hmm. here we are there you, yeah it's, this is my stage I have <laughs> speaking of radio I have a theory that like theater kids are radio kids because or like podcast Literally. kids because you just have this platform where you get to direct attention to yourself <laughs> and your interests <laughs> oh my god I'm obsessed with that yeah. that's way too true <laughs> that's and it's so great funny. it gives you a valid reason to do that um but yeah so those are my main projects and then I have like some side projects I have a like hyper pop alter ego project called I love Lady-esque. that and then I'm working on some new stuff uh that may or may not come to fruition so we'll see about that but that's I the, feel that those are the main <laughs> musical projects that's cool no okay so question for you then do you think hyper pop is mainstream yet Ooh, yes I think it's mainstream in the sense that people who think they're not mainstream but definitely are have now discovered it sure so it's still it's it's mainstream in the way that Phoebe Bridgers was mainstream two years ago yep Do you, does that make sense yes absolutely. Yeah, that's that's the vibe i would I'm agree getting. yeah james and i were having like a debate over that with some friends the other day because like at this point i don't know if hyper pop is still underground <laughs> yeah, not, yeah i definitely like there's i mean as with any genre there's definitely like underground hyper pop artists tons but like yeah. hyper pop like charlie xcx uh, right exactly so major yeah yes. like <laughs> the new album's amazing though but yeah, yeah. definitely way more pop also mm-hmm. yeah yeah which i know that was like the the plan yeah yeah i have like 
I'm woefully underread on Charlie XCX. I'm more of a Caroline Polchek person. I but, respect that. Um, Caroline Polchek is the shit. I love her. I love her new stuff. I'm really excited. I hope she announces an album soon. I but, used to like shit on Charlie XCX and was like, oh, this music is boring and lame. <laughs> and then James was like, you're literally wrong. Listen to some of it. And I was like, fine. <laughs> okay, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> it, it does. It does slap. Yeah, it just is like. I, n- I haven't seemed to gravitate towards it the way I have some other artists, but I I respect the game. I respect the grind. Yep. Same. Well, so you do music. You also do art. I mean, you're multifaceted, which I think is so multifaceted. (laughs) (laughs) So what all kinds of art mediums do you dabble in? Because I know there's bugs. (laughs) There's bugs. I've got bugs currently. Mm -hmm. I have one of your bugs. You have one of my bugs. James gifted me a bug. Oh, that's right. I remember getting that order. I'm like, oh, I wonder if this is going to (laughs) sound. Yeah, there's bugs involved. I do have a fascination with the entomological side of things do you Um, like alive bugs or just dead ones I like alive bugs yeah I do I sort of don't love when they're alive that's yeah so I respect (laughs) that yeah there I mean you know I would I have had the rare instance of a spider being on my face that I did not know was there oh my god yeah scary uh, literally scarring (laughs) but yeah I love alive bugs um my girlfriend has a tarantula oh um, shit (laughs) it's like so scary to me are they um, actually furry yeah well they're like they're like gristly okay so it's a little rougher yeah and uh, I don't know if this is true with all tarantulas but the kind that she has can if it gets threatened can shoot its hairs at you like a porcupine oh my god I did not know that (laughs) but uh, on top of all of the other things (laughs) having eight legs and a million eyeballs a million eyes Okay. And yeah, but they're they're pretty chill. Honestly, tarantulas are one of the chiller types of spiders. But we're also what I'm very stoked about um, is when she moves up here in August, we are going to get hissing cockroaches, which has been my dream since Stop. I was a child, <laughs> and I'm so stoked. One of our friends in high school had those, and. I just like weird party trick was like, you know, always like people are over. Now we bring out the cockroaches <laughs> and it's like, what am I doing here? <laughs> this is when it's time for me to head home. <laughs> That's your cue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So scary to me. Yeah, they're they're wild. I adore them. I find and don't you them have to feed so them cute. other bugs? Yes. Um, both. Well, tarantulas, depending on how big they are, you have to feed them like mice um riley's is not like that (laughs) riley's eats yeah some of these these fuckers get like so enormous that that they will eat birds fucking insane they will eat mice yeah it's wild um they will eat (laughs) not know that (laughs) okay even more scared Mm -hmm. yeah no hissing cockroaches mainly eat honestly fruit um, and I found out they really like peanut butter, which I think is adorable. Wait, so, okay, that is kind of a yeah, it's kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can feed them like you can feed them bugs mainly. Like, okay, my girlfriend also has a gecko, and that That's is kind the of a cool creature. Yeah, yeah, she's cool. We thought that she was a male for the first five years of her life. I say we, like I've <laughs> known my girlfriend for more than two years, but um, recently found out she's a girl, so. Love that's that for her. So funny. <laughs> oh my god, that's so. So, what is her name? Her is name is name? her name is Leah. Now it was Liam. Okay. Um, after the One Direction member. Love that. Apparently, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's funny. So James's parents got like a bunch of barn kittens. They they bought some land. It was like a whole pandemic thing, you know mm-hmm. how you do. Mm-hmm. And so I think it was like a whole thing where his grandma got wind of some random kittens that were stray and they were like oh perfect like we've been (laughs) looking for barn cats so everyone got to name one so his sister named one they the each of the parents named one and then me and James kind of both picked a name for one of them (laughs) and we named our Simon fully thinking it was a boy and then they took them to the vet and like absolutely Simon is 100% a girl and we were like (laughs) you know what Simon it is sticking with it hell yeah, yeah. I, that's what I tried to <laughs> tell Riley I was like her name can just be Liam yeah. like who is it that named some celebrity named her daughter James no way yeah this was like this is like a 2000s celebrity like I think James is probably like 15 now or something oh, but shit. yeah I can't James, are you listening <laughs> yeah James <laughs> Miss James uh yeah or like I don't know I, I know a lot of girls named like Dylan or for sure Oh my God, I used to think boy names as girls were so cute, like Taylor, but yeah, th- you know, I'm I guess it. I kind of have one. Sam. You do kind of, yeah. yeah. Although you, for much of my life, I was Samantha, so. 
you you have the best of both worlds because yeah. you can be Sam or you could be Samantha. Mm-hmm. And it, the one like I do weird. not uh, abide by is Sammy. It's not me. Mm. So Especially fair. with an I. I don't Mm-mm. think so. For my work, we have like these. I actually don't fully know why we do it. I think just so that on our personal Facebook accounts, we're not like managers of our uh, clients' Facebook pages. Mm. So we basically have to set up a fake Facebook account when we start at work. Mm. Seems shady. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I think Facebook doesn't like that. So anyways, it's like not supposed to be your real name. So I remember, you know, Brand, uh, one of my coworkers set it up for me and it was like Sammy Georgeson. And I was like, <laughs> I just can't. I like, can't I do that one. cannot. <laughs> So I think it just says Sam now, but, um, yeah, that's a, that's a no. And you can also only change your Facebook name. Like, you know, there's limits to that. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you can't go fucking around. I remember when everyone was changing their name to like their fake ID forever ago. Oh, I don't remember that. Maybe that was more of a, my age thing, but everyone was changing their Facebook name to their fake ID. So that when bartenders or, um, bouncers would ask you to like pull up your social media, it said the right thing. And then there were a bunch of people who just had to keep that as their Facebook name. (laughs) Oh man. (laughs) Oh, so funny. I'm so chronically online, but the one platform that I do not understand anything about anymore is Facebook. Like I feel that I go on there periodically because like some of my band's our main way we communicate is like messenger yeah so i'll go on there periodically and there's so much going on now like there's so many options to choose from i feel like it's what instagram is headed towards but yeah i think so too at least with the instagram learning curve i've been consistent about i've followed it yeah but with facebook that ship has sailed the same way and i also i mean at this point facebook for me is like a place to go for events and that's it Mm -hmm. or marketplace yeah Mm -hmm. it really is one of the only platforms that has like a solid event planning that's true yeah which i think is interesting because like that's how i find all my little local events and happenings markets yeah riley anytime she comes to town she's like do you want to go to this thing i found it on facebook and i was like how that like where who would, who, would, <laughs> who would think to find this those are all my favorite things i like i feel like madison has so many i eat that shit up i love to hear it because yeah. i feel like local stuff i was talking to another friend about this like a little while ago a couple months ago i was like man the midwest has like so much to offer and everybody just looks over it there's know, so much really cool do. little weird stuff going on definitely we actually went to a recent event at garber feed mail that i thought maybe you would be at because your bugs were there oh um, is it I communication think it was the, yes yeah, I managed the communication booth for I don't know if it was the same event, but an event at Garber Feed Mill oh, really? a while ago. But it, I I only did like a four hour shift. Yeah, yeah, it was okay. like three days long. <laughs> well, we did look for you. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that space too. It's gorgeous. Oh my god, it's so gorgeous. I yeah, I when I heard they were first gonna tear down the Garber Feed Mill, I was kind of sad because I was like, oh, it's so like I know creepy and spooky. Yeah. I kind of love Very it. Very historic. Yeah, but I really like what they've done with it. And there's like, it's just so classy you now. Mm-hmm. So you're still in school. I'm still in school, unfortunately. I, I get that. <laughs> Although also I regret leaving. I will say that. Yeah, yeah. Real life sucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. Kind of got my foot in like both worlds right now. So will you try and work full time while you're in school, or will that be part time? Um, right now my job is part-time but it's like 20 to 30 hours I think depending on how busy it is and what they need for me right um and that's been working okay um once my girlfriend moves up here in August and our lease starts I think that will still be okay but we'll see if I need to up my hours or at that point I might be at a totally different job who knows yeah definitely it is kind of nice to bounce around yes I, I I've been at my current um, barista position for almost exactly a year I started like mid-April and I I'm getting the like itch like I need to do something else yeah. I've been here too long definitely I like always used to glamorize like the barista job I used to just think fun trendy cool you meet cool people <laughs> and now I'm like me before I've had my morning coffee I don't want to meet that person <laughs> and I don't have to serve like thousands of them every morning oh my god the I could probably come and do like a mini series on this podcast about all the Let's. things that I could complain about, <laughs> about being a barista. Um, oh, it's, there's so much. My main beef with being a barista is farmer's market though. Yeah. That sucks. Damn. Because so for farmer's market exclusively, my business 
the business that I work for sets up a window booth so that people can just come and grab right. like either cold brew or like a pre-made like batched out iced vanilla latte or like a couple other things that opens at six in the morning the indoor show, shop opens at seven which means that i if i'm working the market booth i have to get there at five in the morning which means i have to get up and out of bed at four fifteen. Ew. and that is a nine and a half hour shift from when you clock in to when you Holy leave shit. and more oftentimes than not last summer when i worked that shift i would have been i would have just have come from a gig so sure. friday night get off work at five or something and like go load into a gig play a gig if i'm lucky get home at midnight get like four hours of sleep get up go work Ew. the first <laughs> Let's talk about burning a candle at both ends oh my god Absolutely not. it was so unsustainable and i really 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 don't want to do that again this summer so Can you like opt out not exactly um which is one of so I just secret for the podcast I just applied to <laughs> a couple new jobs that are one of them is like in the metalsmithing realm which is one of my one of my fields yes. I guess yeah, quite literally <laughs> one of many um and the other one is like a remote um like admin position for a small publishing company um that's so cool yeah it is it is cool I'm I'm stoked about both of those we'll see you know we'll see if they go anywhere but specifically the metal the like clerk position for this metal smithing studio I would not have to work Saturdays but I think I would be like hey I to to my barista employers I'd be like hey I have my other job Saturday for I can't sure. do Saturday <laughs> no more Saturdays for me yeah I love that a loophole mm -hmm, exactly Definitely. I also one of our dishwashers left and I was like hey like I'm super happy to do dishwashing stuff we were just talking about this before we started recording how my least favorite chore to do like at home is dishes but I love doing it at work because it's like a break essentially you get to right. go in the back like pop in your earbuds if you want no just like customers. zone out not talk to anybody <laughs> so nice um yeah but so I volunteered to take our Sunday dish shift which means I can still get paid and be at work but not have to talk to customers yeah so I'm kind of psyched about that customer service like interacting with people is uh like exhausting in a really particular way oh yeah for like, sure really specific yes it's like because it's like you can tell that these people you're just a cog in there and yes. they're you're serving them you are there for their I'm sorry. I don't know why my phone is ringing. I never get phone calls. It's from <laughs> potential spam from Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, those are the only phone calls I get too. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can just tell that you don't mean anything to them. You are not a person sure. in their eyes. Um, is, would you say that the farmer's market crew is like worse or better? Um, customers or yeah. staff? Customers. Uh, it's hard to tell because there's just that's the other thing is there's just so many yeah. people. I think um, after the first or second farmer's market last year, we like looked at the specs on one of our espresso machines and it was like, you have pulled like we pull our shots in sets of twos. So it was the equivalent of like if there's two shots of drink, it was the equivalent of equivalent of like 4,000, 5,000 drinks or something. Oh my God. And that was just the espresso machine. That wasn't like the, the upfront line where you just hand them coffee and they go. Oh my God, that's insane. Yeah, it was really like unconceptualizable numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, also kind of a bummer to not get to go to the farmer's market. Yeah, that's I, one of my friends, we were talking, she was like, I'm so excited for the farmer's market to start. And I was like, I am so not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she and she was like, yeah, man, uh, that that must suck. Uh, but but going, man, going sure does slap. Right. <laughs> Another local event. Another Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Another local event. Yeah. No, I mean, I love the market. That's like one. And also, I feel like we have a really, really cool one here. We um, do. Especially the downtown one. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cool stuff. So uh, there was like one summer where I thought about... Um, working for Stella's booth, mm. like just doing the farmer's market, but same thing. And at this point I was living at home. So mm -hmm. I was like, I would have to like get on my bike, bike down. It probably takes me an hour to get downtown from the West side and mm -hmm. then, and be there at six. And I was like, I just, that's not realistic. Mm -mm. Who do I think I am? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it, it sucks. It is not, it's not fun. Yeah. 
Plus, I actually feel like if I would have done that, I would no longer like the Stella's cheese bread and it's not worth that risk. It, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. the other thing. You don't want to you don't want to <laughs> start hating things that you truly enjoy. I can't spoil that relationship. <laughs> yeah. But I think that your art sm- or metalsmithing stuff is really cool. I don't Thank know you. much about that, but I love art. I'm not very good at it, <laughs> but I do appreciate it. This is art. Um, well, that's this true. is modern. This is the modern. I am very good at speaking. <laughs> speaking is an art. I love to talk all day long, especially when it's you know, in a setting like this. Yeah, totally. But yeah, I I feel like that's really cool, and I am interested in what kind of piqued your interest there. I think because that's not an art form I generally think of. Yeah, you know, I probably wouldn't have either. I remember when I was like eight or something going to like gallery night or something in town with my parents and they, I don't know why they let us do this. We were eight. <laughs> but <laughs> They let us cast like something. It was in like fishbone. So you like carve out this like really soft fishbone and then you pour molten metal into it and it okay. hardens and makes a cool thing. And I made like this little, I was very, very into wolves at the time. So I made like a little Love wolf that. face. I can totally see that. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was very much that kid um but that's like the earliest thing I remember like being like whoa this is sick you can make like you can make like metal things but they can be what you want them to be definitely and that's part of how you make your jewelry right yeah that is so I do a lot of like casting casting is really scary I it's scary (laughs) for sure I mean that's like a it's lot of hot material. So yeah, and <laughs> it's so bright. The metal gets so bright when you like put. So you put metal in this thing called a crucible, which is like a long stick with a porcelain cup at the end, and then you light it on fire until it gets the temperature of the sun. And it's insane. It's one wrong move, and your your skin is gone. Do you so have to like wear a special gear. You have to wear like really really thick leather gloves and then also these glasses because it's so bright these like green glasses that look super dorky that are like um they look like 3d glasses almost but they're like their lenses are super dark green amazing um, to protect your eyes yeah but yeah so like I didn't give metalworking like a second thought after that one little night until high school we had a really good um art it was called art glass and metal I think was the class section we name. had something similar at memorial yeah yeah you guys had a great art program we did we were like we I have heard multiple west alums independently of one another be like yeah I th- our, our school was like kind of an art school yeah. unofficially right yeah it was yeah it it, it, it also it worked because our sports teams were horrible. Yeah. So <laughs> we had to put Fair. all of our like school spirit into the arts. Yep. Honestly, um, that's better. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah. So I did, I did it in, in um, high school, not until late high school though. I didn't really discover it until like junior or senior year, I think. So is this something that you do from home? Like, don't you need to- Yeah, not really. Yeah. yeah. There's some stuff you can do. Um, from home, I'm sort of slowly collecting bits and pieces sure. of gear to be able to do more from home. But like casting and stuff, you need yeah. like really specialized equipment for that. And like a super like, I can't think of the phrase other than like pimped out safety wise. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <What's> coming, to, <laughs> coming to my brain. <laughs> <laughs> that absolutely works. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. So then uh, for you, do you just access all of that through school currently? Yeah, right now it's mostly through school. There's a really cool spot actually literally across the street from where I go to school right now um, called the Bodgery. That's uh, it's like a co-working space, but geared towards like makers and craftsmen. So they have a metal studio there and I haven't been able to like cast anything there mostly because I'm too scared to cast by myself (laughs) but they have you know saw blades and jeweler's frames and places you can sit and carve and for sure yeah they're a cool spot and they I know a lot of like local artists that work out of their cool either like mainly or periodically so shout out the Badgery stuff like that is kind of nice because it's a good way to get to know people oh yeah for sure yeah the Badgery is also like <laughs> I don't think I've actually been in the Badri or like worked with them since like pre-pandemic but 
anytime I have like a new project, I get a follow from them on social media. And oh, it's I so sweet. <laughs> I'll be like, how did you find this? <laughs> okay, wait. And you have how many Instagrams? Oh, I remember my God. there was a debate. Oh my God. This is embarrassing. <laughs> um, I think when I counted, it was like 17. Oh my God. <laughs> some of them, some of them are like defunct. Um, like old like finstas from high school so they don't sure. really count and some of them of those. yeah the finsta man close friends stories really really I know. they completely got rid of the need i know they really filled that niche i like feel I can, i'm too tied to mine though i can't delete it i know so it same. just sits there it just sits i need to like archive everything that's in there though so that if, if i become super super yeah. famous and successful <laughs> nobody can <laughs> pull some shit on that's me. what i'm saying i will get canceled if people see my <laughs> finsta because what a time we oh were just putting God. insane things on instagram that should i mean that like, nobody yeah. should <laughs> finsta the thing that people would post on Finsta should not have seen the light of day no <laughs> in any form of social media yeah mm -mm. but yeah so, so some of my accounts are like defunct and some of them are like accounts I manage because I do a little bit of like freelancing social media stuff sure um and some of them are like accounts I co-run with people for like bands or yeah like I am I founded and am the editor-in-chief of this uh quarterly zine and like small public that's like networking thing uh so there's that so it's there's they're not just like all 17 right. sigra front and center type <laughs> yeah. accounts but it is still yeah. kind of kind of unhinged the number i have i mean you can't even be logged into all of those at once it's it sucks to try and like yeah. like accounts that i like only need to access you know once every couple weeks or something i'll have to like okay, I have to log out of my Sigra proper account and yeah. log out of my bands account so I can now log into this. And then it deletes all your drafts. And no, I have like, I, I have, know that. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like Twitter if you log out or like okay. delete. I suppose that makes sense. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Sucks, I had though. no idea. Yeah. That's, I, I need to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely good to know. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, even I currently am logged into, like, obviously my podcast account, my account, and then I have my mom's Instagram because she's an <laughs> artist and she's not the best at Instagram. No offense, mom. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, she's learning. She loves to say, actually, her catchphrase at this point is um, that stories aren't her M.O. And I was like, I don't know if stories are anyone's M.O., mom. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> oh, my God. But she doesn't understand them. So we're working through that. Oh, my um, God. But and even then, because, you know, it has a little feature where if you double tap, it switches which account you're on. Mm, yeah. Like, like she uses the shit out of me because all the time I'm on my mom's. And I'm like, I am not following these people. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, <laughs> right. It's a bunch of like 40 year olds. Yeah. <laughs> Who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> I do that constantly, especially if I have accounts that where the profile pictures look vaguely similar. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, wait, this is like my personal account. Oh no, this is my like barista, like niche. I have like a barista account where I just post like insane coffee things <laughs> because I like to get nerdy. Um, and the profile pictures are were kind of similar. I just changed. I just changed my profile picture on Instagram today. Big did moment. You? That's I always did. a big move. Yeah. I know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how long this one sticks. I feel that. I like weirdly get stressed out about changing mine because then I just feel like my, I look like a different person. I'm like this. People aren't going to know who this is. Oh my god. When I like stalk who has viewed my story, which I do, oh, yeah. like constantly. Anytime like anybody changes their profile picture, I I mean I like. I've, it's gotten to the point where like I'm like oh that color profile picture goes with this Same. person and when they change I'm like oh my god yeah. who is this new Throws it all new, off. new <laughs> mysterious person that has been my story oh it's just you know my bandmate or something oh my god that's so true yeah because you're skimming so fast I mean, yeah. we can't be doing that for too long no we're busy people yes. <laughs> especially you oh my god that's just crazy well okay so do you use any kind of like scheduling apps I f well for like for social media or for just yeah. like yeah I use um I w have been using later okay are you familiar with later mm -hmm. um but they're making me pay out the wazoo yep. they are so all so, of them are expensive. I know and so my new my new thing which might not in the long term work out in my favor because it's just <laughs> more accounts is to have like however many accounts they let you have for free on different Dude, platforms I'm like doing that. that right now I have like preview and I have mm -hmm. oh my god yeah 
It's... I have some real janky ones too. <laughs> and I'm like, this is probably still in beta. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I tried. I was actually like, doing some, some research today on, on other ones to, to add mm-hmm. into the roster. And I, there was like one I clicked on and I was like, this looks, uh, yeah. like maybe a high school senior yeah. made it for their like c- capstone project. <laughs> Can't trust it. Mm-mm. Yeah. Absolutely not. Big fan of scheduling apps when they work yeah. and when they're not just another th- another task to add to your right to your roster so okay real life scheduling how do you keep all of your projects straight (laughs) um I have a very full google calendar Mm -hmm. I used to really swear by paper and pencil um I had for the longest longest time like a paper planner that (laughs) you want to hear something maybe kind of sad is (laughs) I always had to make my own like daily hour schedule things because no planner that I could find to buy would have enough hours in the day oh for me to <laughs> schedule myself because they would either start at like 8 a.m. and end at 5 because they're like yeah. 9 to 5 or they'd like start at 8 a.m. and then go to 11 p.m. and I'd be like well but I start work at 6 a.m. so I need, I need oh my God. stuff um yeah I, I would say I've also always struggled to find like that perfect planner there yeah that's and that's why I for the longest time was just making my own a lot yeah. of a most but um I have recently sort of out of necessity switched over to Google Calendar because Same. things just have to change so frequently and people need your schedule so you can just like share it with them that's and, true that is nice yeah but I do still have an analog um like daily task planner thing where I just sure. like write my to-do list essentially is all it is but that is my that is my saving that thing has saved my ass so many times. <laughs> I bet. Seriously. I don't know how you do it. I, okay. I, ha- I love Google Cal. I use it all the time. However, I like refuse because we use it for work, obviously. I like refuse to have my personal life be on the same calendar as my Google calendar because I'm like, they cannot mix. One of them is for fun. And one of them is like the worst thing ever. So it's like, so, and I don't know why I have another friend who is like, really? Because for me, it's like, Oh, here's my little nugget of something to look forward to. And I'm like, they cannot mix. <laughs> you, what if, what if, what would you feel about having a separate Google calendar for your fun stuff that you can like toggle on That's and off? True. That would be smart. It would also be very easy, <laughs> <laughs> but I get it. I get the emotional attachment to yeah. not having them I'm like I touch. just can't have that <laughs> mm-hmm. you don't want the the spinach touching the exactly. baked beans or whatever exactly <laughs> so yeah that's a personal predicament but I do love Google Cal otherwise I even use it for the pod sometimes obviously mm-hmm. when I was more organized <laughs> which I have to get back to but it's tough Man. are you still doing your pod oh, well Yes and no. The pod I was originally initially doing, initially doing, um, kind of, I realized it wasn't exactly what I wanted to be doing because what sure. I mainly like about both, well, more so making podcasts because I'll, I'm a podcast slut. I will listen to all podcasts Same. about anything. Me too. Like the niche or the better. One hundred percent. But um, I was doing kind of like a sort of true crimey short form yeah. like weird tales podcast which was fun but I realized what I really like doing is like talking to people about their projects so I have oh, I did see that rebrand yeah and I maybe thought it was a new one to be honest <laughs> well there was a rebrand r- of the old one right before I decided no nah, I'm not gonna do this anymore okay okay so then there's a new new one that I've been doing for like six months now I think nice. um but just monthly because the other one I was trying to do weekly and that worked fine um when I was unemployed during the height of the pandemic but for I, sure ca- I cannot do that right now I feel that I am it's catching up to me as well oh, yeah um yeah I'm very impressed that you do this every week <laughs> <laughs> it's a commitment it really is I mean I love it but yeah I like need to slow down at work in order to have more time because right now we're like a week out versus like I like to have a few scheduled so mm-hmm. that obviously it doesn't ever have to be a panic at the disco situation totally mm-hmm. yeah yeah but so the new one is called transfer station um and I every month I just like hit up one of my like artistic friends or people that I want to become a friend and nice. using the podcast as a means to oh my God, it's stoke the best friendship friend maker yeah mm-hmm. totally yeah and I just like 
chat about their projects with them so that's been that's been really fun um riley's actually going to be the guest on the next one which nice. is going to be which is going to be fun but yeah i've uh been doing that for a hot minute and don't plan on don't plan on stopping it soon i think this is a good you know i just have to i get the other thing about me and projects is i get so hyper focused on for some sure. idea for like a hot second and then it falls to the wayside so i'm trying to rein it back with this one and be like you are only going to do this once a month you, that's smart. you're not going to do it more than that at least right now just like setting a realistic yeah for longevity purposes mm -hmm. exactly. for sure that's what's up i have to listen to that one i actually haven't listened to that yet yeah i do i do think it's i was gonna say i think it's better than the other one but the other one was more cleanly produced i think this one is a lot sure. of me talking to people over zoom i know that is <laughs> that is a tricky thing i do that a little bit here too i obviously prefer in person for that reason but um Plus, in some ways, it's just more fun. Mm -hmm. But Zoom is so handy. So, like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to be able to talk to people who obviously aren't in Madison. Exactly. Is important. Well, what Thank are you going to do with Thank the rest you. of your evening? Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm going to go home and have a lukewarm glass of rosé. I love that for you. Thank you. I was I actually going to provide you with some sort of beverage before we got started, and I totally forgot. Totally fine. Also, you well, James provided me with water. <laughs> so, a sweet, sweet Ooh, glass yes. of water. Um, I also think that all we have, James has been recently really into Miller Lite for some reason. <laughs> Interesting so, choice. Yeah, like you. But um, <laughs> So honestly, there might not be a lot in this house, but... You know how it is. Well, I've got my lukewarm glass of rosé to look forward to it all as well. Precisely. Yeah. Um, I have more fires to put out with various For things. For sure. Um, but I'm looking forward to um, probably hanging out with my girlfriend via FaceTime because she is in Dallas at the moment. When does and she move up here? She moves up here in August. So nice. still a little ways out, but coming around the corner. Definitely. Yeah. And is that also then when you move into your apartment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be kind of insane. I'm going down there like the last week. No, like the first week of August to like help pack and stuff. And then she lives with her aunt and uncle and they are going to drive with us 17 hours to Madison. Oh, <laughs> also, that's going to be a packed car. Yeah, well, they're going to follow us. So it'll be two, okay, okay. two cars, but... Yeah, even so, I'm going to have, oh my goodness. Don't okay. worry, we do that all the time. <laughs> um, I'm going to have a gecko and now also a tarantula on my lap the entire ride. <laughs> oh so God. it's going to be interesting. Oh my God, that is hilarious, <laughs> I suppose. You kind of got to keep an eye yeah. on your own glass. The, oh my God, the tarantula could give a fuck about where he is or like what's going on the lizard needs so much specificity in its care <laughs> like if it is like one degree too cool if the vibes are off <laughs> like vibes. she will <laughs> she will die and perish so dude that's crazy yeah do they like ever hang out uh the lizard and the tarantula yeah. i don't i don't think i think at this point because the spider is a baby still the lizard would eat the tarantula okay, i think okay. later on the tarantula would try and eat the lizard okay so probably so, not yeah we could separate <laughs> for sure yeah that's like a lot of you know little creepy crawlies it really mm -hmm. i love a good creepy crawly you do. <laughs> <laughs> i definitely do well it's nice that you found someone who loves creepy yeah. crawlies it's it's i'm very lucky yeah. that <laughs> we can get hissing cockroaches <laughs> So how many? Two to start out with. We're going to okay. get one regular and one that is called a Halloween hissing cockroach because it is um, orange and white striped, which is oh adorable. Oh my God. <laughs> I didn't know those exist. I didn't either until Riley showed them to me and I've wow. loved these guys for 15 years or something. So can you like, where do you get those? A normal pet store? You have to reptile go shops. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes sense. For some reason, reptile shops also always carry exotic insects. Cause I why didn't not? even know there were a rep. <laughs> <laughs> the close well, you can't be blamed because the closest one to us is in Monona, um, oh. in like the middle of nowhere, uh, off the side of a highway. It's called Reptile Rapture. Shout out. I used to skip school with my best friend in high school and we'd go hang out at Reptile Rapture. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love that for you. That is so funny. It's, That's what's up. Mm -hmm. Very on brand, I feel like. Yes. What are you planning to do with the rest of your evening? Well, I cleared my whole work calendar today um, nice. because I have been working lots of evenings mm -hmm. and I was like, we can't be doing that today. Mm -mm. So I don't know. James was initially going to go to the studio. Now it sounds like he's not. Um, so maybe I'll force him to hang out with me. We'll see. Nice. But I really don't have a plan. I like haven't had an evening without work in literal months oh my god the I'm best like gonna twiddle my thumbs the best and weirdest feeling right I feel like you're like i need to be doing something 
that makes it worth oh, I know. <laughs> the fact that I don't have work. I like, I feel like you can probably relate to that feeling a lot as someone who I like doing things. I like being busy, mm -hmm. but then I reach a point where obviously I'm too busy, but then any free time stresses me the fuck out. So badly. Yeah. I, yeah. Anytime I have free time, I'll be like, I, I feel kind of sad. And I Riley will be like, just I like know. watch some Parks and Rec with me or something. Right. No, it's gotta be productive. Exactly. Like it's really a bad feeling. Yeah. yeah. It's not great. I'm, no. <laughs> and it's not healthy. And it's like, I mean, cause obviously there are things I could be doing, but at the same time I need a breather. So mm -hmm. I should be taking that it's unsustainable to always be doing things yeah which is a tough pill pill to swallow oh my god yes <laughs> i know especially when you're behind on something you love doing like i know i'm a little behind on the pod and i could be doing like some more marketing or some more social media or some more this or that and then i'm always like that's what i should be doing and then i just like play on my phone for two hours which mm -hmm. is also dumb <laughs> because i'm also very much online mm -hmm. yeah it is what it is. Blessing and a curse. I do <laughs> love the internet, but I also hate it. Yeah. Oh, same. I have so many feelings about the internet. Yeah. I'm always, I'm the first to like defend it when people are like, oh, the internet is, you know, this horrible thing that is, you know, killing the brains of youth. And I have to be right. like, ah, 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 ah. it's like right. that TikTok sound that's like, no, for sure. I know. And there are like Twitter, for example, that's my happy place. Mm -hmm. Twitter like, is like the best. It's the best. As long as you're not. To, like I know some people who are on Twitter who like just like to fight I feel like but okay, if you yeah, just like curate true. your feed just like your homies right. saying funny things exactly that's the best I just love the jokes I'm here for the jokes mm -hmm. and I also feel like it's I mean people do try hard on Twitter but I feel like it's the least try hard yeah yeah if yeah that makes sense yeah Definitely. Um, I've also gotten my TikTok to be in a place now where like when I'm on there, it's just funny and not like dumb TikTok stuff, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which I like. Instagram, I don't know how to do anymore. <laughs> it's, I like don't know how, I work in social, I don't know how to do it. It's Instagram, they're con the, the issue is every day, it seems like there's a new algorithm update and you're I like, know. okay, I have to figure out how to learn this now to yes. maximize whatever reach or yes. engagement of some And I sort. feel like I'm so gamifying the system all the time trying to figure out the algorithm which I hate I'm always chasing it mm -hmm. and I'm like for what <laughs> and then on top of that I feel like I can't keep up with what's cool with the youths like now no one cares about their Instagram feed I used to like to try and make mine aesthetically pleasing I still try and make mine aesthetically yeah. pleasing but I think it's probably hurting me in the long run because the algorithm doesn't like my little like filler tiles sure. that I post but I'm still gonna post them because yeah. I like the way it looks when I go to my page and stalk myself I'm exactly. like oh, that's pretty. plus you have that um like beautiful gradient happening thank you I had yeah. to interrupt that because I'm now posting I have a chat book coming out in um at the in the end of May and uh I'm posting like the cover essentially but like super zoomed in, in pieces in pieces I love that. which I also like but I kind of want to get back to the gradient because it's uh it was, it was very pretty also how exactly did you make it so seamless so I just essentially just post like whatever I want to post followed by a filler tile thing so that's how I keep it consistent and then so when I started doing the gradient I just have a tile in Canva that every time I wanted to change the okay. gradient I would just like move the like the um like color color hex selector, thing yeah. over like two notches and then like two notches up or something Smart. so it's very very subtle yeah no it's perfect very glad you noticed it because mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people have yet well because <laughs> when you're like obviously when you just see the squares in the feed you're not you're like oh that's the same that. but then when you but then like, you go to the yeah you, you have to you have to know the grid you have to be whatever. cool yeah the grid the feed the what are people page? calling it these days? I don't know <laughs> So yeah, it's hard. It's hard to be um, us and really being is. a social media online person. Well, it's win and lose. That's <laughs> what I say. It's hard to have such a fantastic, incredible, amazing, fulfilling life. Right. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> okay. Well, I have to ask because I actually don't know because this is really our first in real life conversation. I know, which is crazy. Would you say that you are like a pessimistic person? I... I, you know, I was thinking about this the other day because I was like prep, prepping in my brain for this, for this interview. <laughs> um, and I, I don't think I am. I think I'm an ac actually like a very optimistic to a fault person. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, I do love to whine. Yeah. And I do love to complain. See, that's all, that's all we need. Yeah, exactly. It's people who can do a, dabble in a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. I, it's funny because at work, people always say to me like, 
like, how do you have that podcast? It just doesn't make any sense. I feel like you're the happiest person ever. And I was like, that, <laughs> because this is my outlet to then come and complain about all of you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what this is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you'll hear James, if you ever speak to him about me, he'll be like, <laughs> all she does is complain. <laughs> so here we are. Yeah. Well, have you ever done um, Rose and a Thorn? Is that the one where you're like, the best part of my day was this, and then the thorn in my day was yes. this? I've... I have slash maybe have just heard of it and internalized it and think that I have. Yep. <laughs> so it's like a little one of those thought exercises and you do rose thorn and bud, which is like something you could improve on for tomorrow mm -hmm. or like just like a, so I would love to hear yours. Okay. 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 So my rose of the day was that I started a new project in my metal smithing class today and it is the second of its kind essentially, but I have these little tiny um, doll heads that are from these dolls called Frozen Charlottes, which are supposedly like super spooky and haunted. It's a little porcelain doll. I love and, it. And um, I am going to cast it into a ring. Um, nice. And the wax form that I did today turned out pretty cool. So I'm stoked to cast it. So that's my rose. Very cool. Um, also this podcast, man, I should have said that. No, no, so I've been looking forward to this all worry. week. Um, that would be a, a trick a trick question otherwise <laughs> um my thorn is that when I went to get brunch with my mother this morning or well I went to go pick up the food because she had a meeting they didn't give me a bag for my crepes so I had to wait in line and like <laughs> no. embarrassingly like timidly ask for a bag so that I could walk home in the rain and still like have one hand with the crepes and one hand with the drinks because I'm not going to carry all four things of course with my poor two hands uh, so Where'd you get thorn. brunch? Bradbury's. Yum. Yes. Yes. I actually Very haven't been quality. there since pre-pandemic, so really? that has to be put back on the list. Yes. I. Yeah, we were doing, well, we're still doing, like, takeout, because my mom is still, like, pretty concerned about contracting COVID. COVID. Um, mm -hmm. But I have been there in person, and it's so nice to, like, sit down and have Definitely. a cortado at Bradbury's in person again. Because it's so cute. So nice. I love yes. it in there. Yeah, one of my coworkers just left our coffee shop and is now going to work there, So, oh, nice. which I have mixed feelings about because I get so stressed out when baristas, like, learn who I am. Like, if, when they, like, <laughs> when they learn who I am, I'm like, I can't handle being famous. <laughs> no, but, like, when they learn my order, like, recognize me, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't. Like, I can't. I have to stop coming here. <laughs> Right, time to switch. Now that somebody who I've actually worked with is gonna gonna work there, I, I don't know. I don't know yeah, what the what the vibe is gonna be. Going anymore. You know? It's not the same piece. No. Okay, and yeah. your bud. Um, my bud is that I can't improve on anything. I'm just perfect. I I'm love it. So perfect. That's the correct <laughs> attitude. <laughs> uh, I need to respond to my. Texts in general, but specifically my girlfriend's texts sooner because I have a bad habit of like seeing that she's texted and then like forgetting to respond to her text, but then like DMing her on some other social media <laughs> platform and she'll be like, you didn't, can you answer my question? So I think I need to do better at that tomorrow. <laughs> Dude, I feel that. I feel like I am the same way because I like am a serial open text, forget I open them, not respond completely. <laughs> it's gone. Lose track of them. Yeah. And then I'll be, yeah, like swiping up on their stories or something. And they're like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you on Instagram? Yeah. So that's a good answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Something we could both improve on for sure. Now you have to do yours. Yes. Okay. So I would say, um, Rose of my day actually was absolutely this podcast. Hell yeah. Because I was also looking forward to this all day and it was just nice to meet you in real life. Yeah, so nice to meet you. Like a long life. time coming. Let's see. Thorn, I would say um, definitely work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, I would say specifically I woke up. So I have to be at my office at 830, but it's just across the street. So usually not a big deal. Mm -hmm. However, today I went back to sleep after my alarm. Classic mistake. Mm -hmm. And I woke up literally at like 805 and I was like, oh. uh, so I was absolutely very late. Um, however, I don't know if anyone noticed. So <laughs> I hope none of you are listening. <laughs> And then something I could improve on for tomorrow would be waking up on time. However, I work from home for tomorrow, so I only go in twice a week, which is kind of nice. nice. And it's right across the street. That's like, yeah. Ugh. Oh, my God. It is very ideal. Yeah. So ideal. I really right across the street from your like gorgeous warehouse apartments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the dream. <laughs> I know. Well, I was telling you how it used to be quite literally 
next you could door. see it yeah which does that sounds stressful yeah <laughs> don't don't love that like then people can see if i'm slacking and you can't be having that i mean that's just really none of their business <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the the office moved it was like a pandemic move um and now they're like the perfect distance away i can still pop home for lunch or if i just need a second also if i forget things which happens quite a lot I can come home. That is so nice. I live two blocks from where I work currently and it's so nice to be like, yeah. oh, I'm going to clock out, but I kind of want to stay here and do some like other work on my computer, but I forgot my computer. So I'll see you in 10 minutes. Yes, for real. I like, so I'm in meetings all day long, which is dumb when I'm in the office. So I need AirPods or mm-hmm. some form of headphone because I obviously would be disturbing everyone. Mm-hmm. So I like always forget them here. And I'm always like, made it all the way to the office. Got to go get my AirPods damn it (laughs) so you know but work from home tomorrow so if I wanted to get up at 805 it probably wouldn't be as big of a deal if I was still in my pajamas who would know (laughs) who would know nobody has to know exactly well thank you so much for joining me yes thank you so much for having me I'm so stoked I I have I I genuinely have been listening to this podcast since its inception I love it (laughs) um yeah a true fan true truly a true fan well I feel that way about literally every single project that you do and James and I have a mission to come and see your one of your bands yeah play at some point I don't I like mobs my main band our next gig isn't for a while but watermelon collie one of the bands I play bass in is supporting uh, a band this I think weekend I saw you yeah, post that. Saturday. yeah it's it's definitely a different scene than For mobs sure. is it's a little more grungy a little more uh that's what's up <laughs> too cool for school radio kids of but uh, you gotta you gotta love them so definitely well so, cool yeah. if you're nice. feeling like grunging it up on saturday swing definitely through. fun yeah and yes i definitely i mean i want to see your main band playing at some point too yeah well um we're both chronically online as discussed so i won't miss it i will be sure to post about it send you the info absolutely yeah and like i'd love to be on the pot again someday like i I would love a specific barista episode oh my god i i will i can prepare and like it could be customer service themed that way i also can weigh in yes um, also i'm sorry i feel like i just like talked so much about myself that's what this is for (laughs) for real I love it. Okay, good. good. You were a fantastic guest. Thank you. And um, this was fantastic conversation. Yes, agreed. (laughs) Thank you for the snacks. Oh my gosh, yes. Having me over. You got to give people a good snack. Oh, I love it. Well, thank you. And thank you all for listening. And I will chat with you all again next week. Bye. Another cathartic convo in the books. I feel better. How about you? Thank you so much for listening. Now I just want to jump on here and say, don't forget to follow and or subscribe to the pod on your favorite streaming platform for new episodes every single week because I know you can't get enough of me. Additionally, if you want to gain access to exclusive episodes and behind the scenes bloopers and lots of other goodies, join our patreon and support the pod with your hard-earned american dollars you can find the link in our show notes or you can also visit us at patreon.com slash pessimistic at best and of course don't forget to follow us on instagram at pessimistic at best and if you're as obsessed with me as i am with you you can find me at sam georgeson on all platforms and last but not least i'd like to give a special shout out out to my podcast editor and producer, the love of my life, James Arbae, whom I literally could not do this without. So thank you, James. I love you so much. And thank you guys for joining me again this week. I love you too. And I cannot wait to chat with you again soon.